Hey everybody, I want to have a quick discussion about uh, Juno 106 and uh, its relevancy today. Um, I want to compare a JU06A module to a Prolog 16 and uh, I want to talk about some gear lust and, and uh, you know, some things that I want in the future also. But just to, to be clear, uh, I have a lot of gear, obviously, you know, you could see around me. just for a regular you musician. I'm not, I'm not a, a professional studio or anything like that. And I just like to play around and make my own tunes. If you want to check them out, um, you can follow me on Instagram, Mike C M Y C S E E. Um, go over there and, uh, you, you can find out how to to take a listen to some of the things that I've made with some of these things in the studio. But um, this is a home studio, so all this stuff is owned by me, and um, and I've had a lot of it for a long time. Some of it I've been collecting for years. But let's get to the point. Um, I'm always um, looking for more stuff. I have, like, gear lust, just like everybody else, obviously. Um... I think that I have too many things in this studio. Um, there's a lot of redundancies in here. And and I'm out to prove it to myself because I'm always trying to uh, thin out the amount of gear that I'm using. Just focus on one thing all the time. And it doesn't ever work. I think I have too many things in here. It's hard to part with some of them. I'm sure that you guys have the same problem. And you always want what's coming out new. Like, uh, for instance, um, I made a post on my Instagram recently about um, how that uh, Dave Smith is coming out with a Profit 5 reissue revision 4. And it looks amazing. It sounds amazing. I saw some of the videos on YouTube. I'm definitely uh, going to want one of those. <laughs> I probably will have to get rid of a couple of things in order to afford it. But um, but mainly, I want to talk about um, the, the Juno 106. Now, recently, over the past couple of years, those the prices on those things have skyrocketed through the roof. Um, they sound awesome. Um, you know, everybody wants one for good reason, and... I think a lot of that has to do with uh, one man. I'm not going to mention any names, but I think we we all know who I'm talking about, who uses the Juno 106 and kind of pioneered bringing that thing back into the mainstream. Um, and he knows how to use it. <laughs> so, uh, and it sounds great. But the thing is, a lot of people are knocking to Prologue 16. While I've seen prices on Juno 106 skyrocket, I've seen prices on the Prologue 16 go in the toilet. Um, and I don't really know why that is, because a Juno 106 it is... I mean, you can get a Prologue 16 to sound exactly like a Juno 106, and the features... And the fact that it's brand new, that blows a Juno 106 away, a Prolog 16. It's powerful. And, you know, a lot of people are knocking it. But here, check it out. So I know that I don't have a real Juno 106, but I have a JU06A from Roland, which is fairly new. And I've seen comparisons on YouTube, and this thing is bang on to what a Juno 106 sounds like. I know that it's obviously missing two voices and a Prologue 16 has 16 voices. But um, just as a quick comparison, I was trying to get my Prologue 16 to sound like a JU06A. And I think I was pretty successful. No matter what I do to this Prologue 16, as long as I, or the JU06A, as long as I match what I'm doing on the Prologue 16, they are both pretty damn close. So check this out. Here's the sound of the JU06A. Oh, by the way, I have a Novation Supernova to controlling my JU06A. And here's the chord prologue 16. Here's a chord. I mean, 
come on. No matter what I do to this thing, as long as I match them both, they are bang on. Bang on. <laughs> I know the LFO is not syncing up properly or what, you know, but, but here's the point. Everybody always wants something new all the time. And, uh, take a look at the gear that you have. I'll bet that you can get a lot of the synthesizers that are out today that are analog. I'll bet if you bought one of them, you could get one of them to easily sound like a Juno 106. Now, I know the workflow might be different. And, uh, you know, when you when you sit behind a piece of gear, it's inspirational and all that. And I understand that when you get a new piece of gear, you you know, it, it, it the workflow might be different. So it gives you other ideas, the way that it feels and looks. It, it might have an influence on the way that you create with it. But if you only use one piece of gear and you extract everything that you can out of it, I'll bet that you can come pretty close to what you're looking for with one piece of gear without filling your whole studio with too many things that dilute your attention. And um, that's all I have to say about that. If you want to check out my tunes, like I said, Go to Mike C, M-Y-C-S-E-E -E on Instagram and follow me and ask questions and you can subscribe here too. Have a good day.